Hey kitties! It's another episode of Warcraft Happy Fun Time. Today, I uh, am doing more quests because it just so happened that I came across my other favorite quest in the game from Cataclysm, and I couldn't not record it. So let's go do that. It was also my first day of school today, and I felt like talking about it um, a little bit. It's a little exciting to get back into school after being... I think I took a semester off at the start of this year. But anyway, before I get into talking about myself, um, we're about to enter the tomb of the Warden and the Sentinel. And this is actually two quests that kind of sort of work together. Um, first, we're going to come around this corner... And obviously this is in the Badlands, so we're getting, we're very close to a uh, dungeon called Oldham, which is located, or Alderman, sorry, derp, which is located up there. And the first challenge we have is the riddle of the Warden. The statue clicks into place on the large stone slab. You see the statue split into two, then four, then eight identical statues in a square formation. You hear, you hear a voice, not through your ears, but in the back of your mind. A true warden does not face outward, searching for signs of danger. A true warden keeps his gaze inward, always focused on protecting his quarry. Perhaps this is a riddle of some sort. And you have to complete the warden's game by teleporting pawn pieces into inward-facing positions. So what we have is a puzzle. Um... What we're going to do here is, I think the easiest way to do this is to teleport one inside and then just go around the outside, like so. And eventually, we will be able to have all of these pieces facing inwards, I think. Yeah, now we move the last one, the game's completed. Jade statue becomes one again and you place it in your pocket. You hear a shifting noise in the tomb's central chamber. So that's one piece of the puzzle. The other piece of the par puzzle is the um, Sentinels game, which is on the other side of the chamber through here. Damn, there's a lot of beetles in here. Charge off one of these things, make the trip go a little faster. If I can click one, they're so small. I can't tab target them because they're not hostile, so whatever. There we go. As you can see, this room's a little bigger. And for the Sentinels game, what we have to do is connect all of the statues. So basically, the statue is going to shoot a laser beam. And this is a bit like the, um, this is a bit like a laser puzzle from Zelda. Because what we have to do is basically position all of these statues. And sometimes we won't get the right positioning. But we have to position all these statues so they're shooting at each other. And we want to connect these statues to the, that red statue over there. So let's see. Let's shoot a laser beam down towards that guy. Shoot a laser beam back there. And right there. And I think we finally get one right here. And that finishes the game. So, that's the two objectives. And now after doing that, we can go investigate the Warden and the Sentinel in the Central Chamber. And, uh, well this part isn't as interesting. But it kind of goes about as well as expected. Hello, giant robot! Let's be fr- okay, never mind, no friendship, just anger and beating my face in. Whatever. So anyway, this is a good time to talk about my first day of school. Um... It was kind of awesome. I love my new class. Uh, 
not really because it, it seemed like an interesting course. And it does seem like an interesting course. I have to do a lot of data analysis and collecting figures. We have a um, major football tournament that has a very great effect on our college and our town economy. And what they want us to do in this class is we are going to do data collection and determine exactly what the economic impact of this ex this um, sporting event is going to be on our town's economy uh, over the course of the semester. That's like our huge project. And um, with master's degree courses, it's it feels a lot more relevant and doesn't feel like I'm filling my brain with useless information. Um, like they might actually use the the data that we come up with to determine if they want to keep doing this tournament um to see what effects it has on the town and uh, to see if it if it's worth keeping up even if it's a detriment to uh, my college just because it's such a big boon to the town economy you know that sort of thing so i'm gonna loot this thing here So yeah, all of those things are factors that we have to take into consideration when we start doing this. So, I think I was pissed off something. So that's fun, and that's one thing I'm getting done, or working on, is um, this new class. My other two master's courses are actually going to be online, though. So basically, this semester, I only have one course that I have to go to college for, <laughs> and the other two I can basically do on at home. Um, which is good, kind of. Um, you know, with online courses, it's it's very um, beneficial if it has to be online to uh, be close to the college that you're taking the online courses at. So if you do have any problems, you can always just, you know go to the college that your professor's at and ask him yourself. Anyway, we are going to skedaddle through the Badlands here, and I'm going to get to the other quest I wanted to show off, another one of the super popular ones, which is famously called The Day Deathwing Came. Sounds kind of dirty if you think about it the wrong way, but no, that's, that's, you're being silly. It's not like that. You'll see. Just gotta go up this here thing, and this quest is over here all by its lonesome. Kind of like an Easter egg, I guess. But it starts with this guy, Felder in the Lost. Deathwing made quite a mess when he passed through these parts. If it weren't for me, he'd probably still be here laying waste to all the good people of the Badlands. What, you don't believe me? Fine, let me tell you the whole story. And so he listened to his tale. I remember it well. It was a bright, shiny day. I was just minding my own business when all of a sudden, Deathwing appeared. I said to myself, I'm gonna punch that dragon in the face. Unfortunately, the cataclysm had knocked loose a bunch of angry elementals. You dang blasted rock elementals, I said. I'll punch you too. Now, I thought this quest had voice acting. Let's see here. Turn on ambient sounds. Let's turn on air speech. I don't know. Let's, uh, crank the volume up a little bit. But anyway, so we play as this little dwarf. And we have here some dang blasted rock elementals. And we are just, uh... Gonna go, I guess. Hang on a second. Let me, uh... I don't think error speech is doing it. I think it would be emote sounds, if anything. We'll see. We'll see about this. I could have sworn this quest had voice acting. Come on, little dwarf, you can do it. Go run and punch Deathwing in the face. 
past all these rock elementals. Oh, so many of them. I don't remember this many rock elementals being here. Huh. I'm gonna punch that dragon right in the face. You can if you believe in the power of fists. God, there's a lot of them. Holy crap. Huh. Oh my god. Run. They're just distractions. Meager little obstacles in your quest to punch Deathwing in the face. Hi, Deathwing. Get punched in the face. We punched Deathwing in the face. Yeah. What can I do for you? Some story, huh? Now you know why Deathwing hasn't come back here since. See you soon. No, 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 Feldrin. You're telling the story wrong. That was a really good gnome voice. Now, I wonder if I can keep that going. Hang on. <clears throat> How did I do that? Not only was Steldrin's story wrong, it was boring, unimaginative, and slow. I'll tell how things really happened that day. And then we listen to the gnome's version of the story. Daylight's burning. First of all, it wasn't sunny out. It was cloudy when Deathwing appeared. The cowardly dragon must have seen me because he turned away and flew into the clouds. I'll find you in those clouds, you worm, I yelled, and then I'll throw you at a calum door. Luckily, I had been tinkering with my world shrinking device. I had decided to keep shrinking the world until I could reach the clouds. And so we began to shrink the world. Mother of God, it's the apocalypse. We're a giant gnome. Once the world was small enough, I started to hunt for Deathwing in the clouds. I should also mention, I'm sorry, I stutter a lot. When I'm reading stuff, sometimes I don't know, I just, my brain skips a beat. It only happens when I'm like reading quest text or something. I like, I get ahead of what I'm talking about and it's just like... So, yeah I know. There's no way I'm gonna end up being the best commentator on YouTube or anything. Because, like, I fumble over my own words and sentences so often, and it does not make it for amazing commentary. I mean, like, I feel like I've got some other things going for me, but I don't know. That's going to hold me back for a while. I had searched every cloud, but I couldn't find Deathwing. It was then that I realized he was hiding in the sun. I looked up. Oh god, it's the sun! <laughs> the sun burned me bad, but I got my hands around his slimy neck. I summoned all my strength, faced west, and threw him to Kalimdor! And that's the gnome's version of the story. The end, no moral. Wow, Lucian, you need to stop drinking right now! And we have one last story. McGraw. These two have no idea how to tell a story. Theldoran's story was too short, and Lucian's tale was a little too tall, if you catch my drift. Also, neither of their stories had hot babes in them. Sit back, Rexar. I'll tell you exactly what happened that day. Listen to Martek the Exiled's version of the story. Go forth to victory. The day the Deathwing came, blood rained from the skies. I believe I was showing my motorcycle to some hot babes at the time. After Deathwing appeared, they became quite frightened, but I only had room to rescue one of them. So, we got an orc. We got a female night elf. We got a human. And a male blood elf. Hmm. You know what? I'm pretty sure my friend Bragg's watching this video, and I'm going to make him proud for once. Let's take the female orc. Martek, you are the bravest orc I know. Hop in, baby. Woohoo! Martek picked me! Why? Why are you leaving me? I could die in peace knowing that my last two moments were with Martek. 
<laughs> oh god, we run off down the canyon. Careful to avoid falling rocks. Speed boots. Brrrr. Hold on tight. It's a bumpy ride. The cataclysm's happening all around us on our super powerful motorcycle of death. Gauge the afterburners. Yeah. When I reached the end of the canyon, I remembered that my motorcycle could fly. That would have been helpful to know earlier. Yeah. I flew to the top of a pillar located just north of the canyon. During the flight, I shared a tender moment with the lovely orc. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah, baby. Sub Deathwing. Top of the pillar, I saw him. Deathwing. The time for the ultimate showdown had arrived. I'm gonna punch that dragon in the face. Hey, guys, quit interrupting me. Fine, you don't get to hear about how I beat Deathwing in a knife fight. Your loss. What do you need? I can't believe these guys would interrupt me like that. My story was going so well, too. Anyway, thanks for sticking around so long. It's nice to have someone to share our tall tales with. I'm sure Lucian and Theldren feel the same way. You have any you'd like to share with us? And that's the quest. I actually don't have a better drink, so I'm going to take this one. <laughs> Oh dear. Well guys, that's pretty much all I wanted to show you. Not a very long episode. Um, the other ones kind of went crazy. But I really wanted to show off those two quests. They're really good. Blizzard did a really good job during Cataclysm making quest ex the uh, questing experience a lot more fun. And uh, I go through Badlands every time I level on Horde side just to get both of those out of the way because they're just both great but that's all i got for you and tune in next time for more great adventures in azeroth i'll see you guys later oh wait hang on one more thing i really appreciate appreciate you guys supporting this series it actually inspired me to get back into recording regularly um the fact that i could just you know throw my mind down into videos and have people not bitch about it it was it was really good i really appreciate those likes and stuff it's not about who oh, spreading the video or popularity or whatever um i started watching a lot of vsauce recently and you know virtual applause that's about all you can get is a like or a comment and um i'm glad you like it i'm really glad it 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 makes me feel great. So, sappiness aside, see you next time.